When Zimbabwean President Emerson Onengagwa immobilized the military from running elections as they illegally had done mainly since 2000 at the height of militarization of politics in fear of Bora Musango internal sabotage and replaced it with forever associate Zimbabwe force. A central intelligence CIO, controlled hybrid securocratic entity that eventually ran the polls, the big question subsequently became, what will the army do? Will it retreat or fight back? Omningagwa's surprise appointment of Lieutenant General Anselm Nemo Sanitary, the closest military ally of his main internal political rival Vice President Constantino Chiwenga, as the new Zimbabwe National Army ZNA commander. Partly answers that question. Sanitary replaced Lieutenant General David Sigok, who retired recently. Sigok had replaced the late Lieutenant General Edzai Chimonio in 2021. Before Sigok came in, Umningagwa and Chiwenga had fiercely fought over the proposed appointment of Lieutenant General Engelbert Ragik as ZNA commander. Chiwenga wanted Rujaj, his close ally, to take charge, but Umningagwa refused. A compromise was reached to place Sigok in charge for two years. So the coming in of Senutui signals a victory for the military over Umningagwa's politics. The unexpected appointment of Senutui with immediate effect is part of a major fightback campaign by the army which had been aggressively forced to retreat by Umningagwa through a series of redeployments. Purges and mysterious deaths, according to informed military insiders. A military source told the news hawks this week, when you were writing those four stories before the recent elections. We told you that there will be far-reaching ramifications of Umningagwa's political strategy and the biggest post-election issue to watch out for will be what will the army do. Is it going to retreat to the barracks or fight back? Umningagwa sidelined the army and used FARS to seek re-election, and a possible third term, which is now complicated, but that was always going to cause a reaction. Whether a retreat or a fight back. The issue of the unsettled leadership question between Umningagwa and Chiwenga, and the role of the army, is explosive and won't go away. This is where we are now. Sanyatwi, who is on United States and United Kingdom targeted sanctions due to his role in the August 1, 2018 election-related massacres of civilians in the streets of Harare over delayed poll results. Is personally close to Chiwenga and the main commander that Umningagwa does not trust, yet he was central to the November 2017 military coup and is now in charge of the army under the overall Defense Forces Commander General Philip Valerio Sibanda. The military source added, Sanitui's bouncing back certainly signifies a military fight back, not Umningagwa's consolidation of power. Umningagwa might be the appointing authority and might also have appointed Sanitui's wife Chido as deputy home affairs minister. But Sanitui is Chiwenga's foot soldier through and through. Chiwenga helped him become presidential guard commander and to get quick promotions. When the coup took place, Sanitui was a brigadier general. He was promoted or perhaps kicked upstairs to become major general and then retired as a lieutenant general with other generals such as Martin K. Dondo, Douglas Nikayaramba and former Air Vice Marshal Shebishambe Wanda. The most high profile among those who were sidelined was him, Sanyutui, as he led the presidential guard, drawing widespread criticism for telling the Kalima Motland Commission of Inquiry into the August 1, 2018 Harare killings that one of his soldiers caught on video shooting into a crowd was firing into the air at a 45-degree angle. The Motland Commission found that the military used unjustified and disproportionate force, including live bullets, to quell the August 1, 2018 unrest. That led to the US and UK imposing targeted sanctions on Sanitui. When it was found that the Zimbabwean security services were responsible for six deaths and 35 injuries during the August 1, 2018 protests, Sanitui was subsequently sacrificed and that served Dumningogwa's expedient political agenda. The Motland report concluded that the use of live ammunition on civilians was clearly unjustified and disproportionate, which was damning. A few months after that, the Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission found that law enforcement agents seemed to resort to use of brute 
excessive and disproportionate force in most circumstances, thereby causing avoidable loss of life and also worsening the situation, resulting in the deaths of 17 people during the January 2019 fuel protests. A Human Rights Watch report also detailed allegations of rape and indiscriminate door-to-door -door raids by the Zimbabwean security services around the time. This left Senyatwi and others in charge vulnerable to removal by Umnengagwa for political expediency. Not due to concerns over human rights. The source continued, further, Senyatwi was the go-between in Chiwenga's divorce with Mary Mubewa. He paid Gupiro Shona token of divorce. Besides, when he was ambassador in Tanzania, where he was sent to political isolation from Chiwenga, he frequently came home to keep in touch with the vice president and others in their military network. Military sources told the news hawks, which covered the far story extensively before, during and after the elections, that the situation could lead to a new political brinkmanship in the election aftermath even though Umningagwa was aggressively consolidating power while Chiwenga was on the back foot. One of the stories is republished in this edition on pages four-fifths for context and background purposes. The military, deeply involved in Zimbabwean politics since the days of the liberation struggle and in elections particularly from 2000, had run the 2018 polls that gave Umningagwa a semblance of democratic legitimacy after the coup, although his legitimacy has always remained contested. Now the military is vigorously pushing back against its commander-in-chief, Umningagwa, in the post-election period in a bid to stop ruthless purges of its command element that brought him to the helm through a coup six years ago which is part of his coup-proofing strategy. Insiders say. Military insiders say the reaction by the army was triggered by Umningagwa's aggressive coup-proofing maneuvers, particularly removal of the military from running the recent elections and replacing them with FOS. Senyatwi is anti-FOS. Coup proofing is a strategy of creating structures that make it hard for any small group to seize power through a putsch. These coup proofing strategies may include the strategic placing of family, ethnic, and factional groups in the military and other positions of influence, as well as fragmenting of military and security agencies by removals, redeployments, and eliminations. Analysts say Zimbabwe is currently a militarized authoritarian state in which Umningagwa and ZANU-PF remain in power through structure-induced stability. Security forces, particularly the army, are central to stability and keeping ZANU-PF in power. The shadowy CIO-run FARS, unconstitutionally and illegally funded through state resources, emerged at the center of the recent elections amid charges of brazen manipulation of the whole electoral process from voter registration. Voters' role inspection, voting, collation and transmission. This is what the army used to do under the late former President Robert Mugabe and Uningagwa until 2018, especially after 2000 at the height of militarization of politics. FOS is also now involved in ZANU-PF political strategies, including disqualification of opposition candidates before the elections and the current recalls of MPs, to ensure Unengagwa remains in power and even gets a two-thirds majority to change the constitution to seek a third term in 2028 when his current constitutional second term ends. FOS, which is registered as a private non-governmental organization, did not make it a secret that its task was to help Uningogwa to win re-election. It took a lead role at campaign rallies and heaped praise on the 81-year-old despite his central role in Zimbabwe's disastrous failure under 43 years of ZANU-PF rule. God seldom packages and presents resilience, hard work, wisdom, experience, visionary caring leadership and good energetic health as in this candidate, far said of Uningogwa. However, Zimbabwe's opposition and civil society activists always said the shadowy group has a darker side, accusing it of intimidating voters and interfering in electoral processes. A reality exposed systematically in detail by the news hawks. Once ensconced in power after coming in through a coup and having controversially won the bloody 2018 election, Uningagwa unleashed a wave of shakeups. 
clear outs and eliminations to consolidate and maintain power. He was also determined to unclass Chiwenga's grip on levers of power that he almost wiped out all his coup allies. Through a combination of redeployments, removals and the political contingency of death, planned or natural, Uningogwa appeared unstoppable, especially after the ZANU-PF Congress last year in October and the recent elections. He used all the rules in the dictator's playbook, from weakening and eliminating both internal and external rivals to personalizing power and suborning state institutions. Uningagwe rang in the changes in the military. Police and CIO, targeting Mugabe and former First Lady Grace Mugabe's allies, before going for Chiwenga's loyalists. Key commanders, who pivoted the coup including Sanyatwi who was presidential guard commander, were removed in February 2019. While Chiwenga was battling ill health in India. Like his initial South African health mission, the Indian health trip in 2019 was unsuccessful, resulting in his seeking treatment in China. Allowing Umningogwa to consolidate. Commanders retired for diplomatic assignments when Chiwenga was away included the late Zimbabwe National Army Chief of Staff retired Lieutenant General Naikai Ramba who was chief of staff responsible for service personnel and logistics, retired Lieutenant General Martin K. Dondo and retired Air Marshal Shibe Shambe Wanda. In May 2019, Uningogwa then appointed Sanitui Zimbabwe's ambassador to Tanzania. While Naikai Ramba was posted to Maputo, Mozambique. K. Dondo was posted to China. Sanyatwi has a personal relationship with Chiwenga to the extent that he flew from Tanzania to assist him finalize his divorce proceedings with his wife Mary Mubewa by paying Gupura token of divorce. Another big blow for the Chiwenga camp was the removal of Rujaj, who was critical in the coup, from heading ZANU-PF's critical mass mobilization political commissariat. Rujaj operated in the war room during the coup. He was promised the job of the Zimbabwe National Defense University vice-chancellor, which did not come. Things got worse when he started criticizing Uningogwa everywhere. Sources say the return of Senyatwi, the key commander that is closest to Chiwenga and the one that Uningogwa does not trust the most, signals the fight back by the army. And his clandestine third-term bid will be the new battlefront amid renewed fight for leadership as the political, economic and security situation continues to deteriorate, showing no meaningful change from the Mugabe era.